Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Tip about the new Fitbit Charge 3. Now Fitbit Charge, the entire Charge series, um, over the course of all these years, is the most popular Fitbit product line to date. Uh, it's sold tens and tens of millions of units, and this is finally the newest edition of that. It's been almost two years since they've released a new Fitbit Charge edition, and the Charge 3 is basically also the first one that kind of falls in line underneath the Versa and Ionic in terms of some of the new features that both of those higher end smartwatches got over the last year. Now I'm here to give you 17 quick little tidbits about the Charge 3 that you may or may not know. Uh, some of them are pretty interesting and definitely not quite some of the things you might normally see on the marketing PR side of stuff. Um, so, number one on this, it is finally waterproof. Uh, so Fitbit's taken a lot of flack over the years, rightly so, because of the fact that their units have been less waterproof than a $10 watch from Walmart. Um, and so now the Charge 3 is actually fully waterproof to 50 meters, uh, which is kind of a big deal, also kind of not a big deal. It should have been that way all along. Next, number two is the unit has a 40% larger uh, viewable display size. Uh, so this display here now, if you tap it on the side, there is a touchscreen display and it's 40% bigger than the previous Charge 2, um, which is certainly noticeable. Uh, you'll notice here that the numbers are bigger. Everything is just bigger. It's not this kind of tiny little sort of display. It is touchscreen um, and it is something that is pretty easy just to swipe through things and, and move around the user interface. Uh, nothing too complex, nothing too unordinary compared to the rest of the Fitbit lineup. Number three is the addition of NFC or contactless payments in some of the additions. Uh, so in the case of North America and Europe, you have to buy the Fitbit Charge 3 Special Edition um, versus in Asia Pacific, it comes with it. Now NFC and contactless payments allows you to go ahead and use this to pay for things at a Starbucks or any other shop that supports contactless payments. You simply go ahead and put it on here, load your credit cards onto the unit itself, and then just double tap the side button and go ahead and pay for it. Super quick and easy is something I've used on the Ionic and Versa in the past. And you know, last year when I talked with CEO James Park about this, um, he did say they expected to see contactless payments come down to the sub $150 price point, uh, and they're pretty close to that depending on which country you are, you're in. So it's nice to see that that sort of technology has left that $300 price point and is now down 150 ish or so, depending on again which special edition and which country you're in. Okay, number four here is a biggie, which is the addition of the SpO2 sensor to the Fitbit Charge 3. Uh, now, the SpO2 sensor was also technically in the Versa and Ionic lineups, uh, but in neither case were they actually leveraging it. The consumer itself couldn't see the data from that. Uh, in the case of all three, that's coming later on this year with these new sleep insights. Uh, but in the meantime, SpO2 is basically the relative blood oxygenation level uh, that'll go ahead and show you, again, on your app, not on the device itself. This is sort of the first that you'll see of Fitbit get in this realm, which gets number five on the list, which is the new sleep disturbance tracking that comes as part of um, an entire sleep dashboard panel that you'll see later on this year. Now that whole area focused on sleep and SpO2 is kind of the general trend that you see in wearables, whether it be Garmin or Apple or Samsung, all these companies, including Fitbit, as part of an FDA program designed to focus on software as a medical device. Um, what that means is they want to be able to take certain modules of devices, such as the Fitbit um, Charge 3, and just focus on one particular software module, module and certify that as opposed to the entire device being certified from an FDA standard. Uh, and of course, FDA is where you get into the body of a regulatory uh, device, uh, medical device, as opposed to just sort of a casual activity tracker. And of course, Fitbit has gotten into plenty of trouble in the past, um, lots of lawsuits around whether something is a medical device or not a medical device. So this is really the first attempt by the company to go into that direction and do it in a way that hopefully gets none of these technology companies in trouble and also sets expectations accordingly with consumers as to what is a real medical device and what is something you just can use to track your fitness. Number six on the list is the addition of a touch button. Now, it's not a physical button that will click as you press it. Instead, it's something you're going to press on the side right here, and you feel that haptic feedback, which is a fancy term for vibration, um, into the watch that lets you know you press this button. Fitbit says the reason they went with this style button as opposed to a clicky button is because of waterproofing reasons. It is, of course, easier to waterproof something that's not a button because water can't get into the cracks, um, and this helps to solve that and also gives a little bit of that Apple-esque kind of feedback on pressing something and feeling that force feedback within it. Uh, you'll use this button here on the side to get back through menus mostly, uh, so kind of almost like a bit of a back button as well as to wake up the device itself. Number seven on the list is the Charge 3 goes ahead and gets female health tracking. This is something that came to the Versa and Ionic 
early this year and now you're seeing it here as well. Right now you can track menstrual cycles with this and then coming later on this year, you'll also be able to track more fertility and pregnancy related cycles on the units as well. And this is for all three units via the Ionic, Versa, as well as the Charge 3. Number eight on the list is the reduced weight of the unit itself. Um, so Fitbit's reduced the entire weight by 20%. Uh, so they've taken a little bit of weight off this and some of that comes from the materials that you're using and they've swapped out the pods here for an aerospace grade aluminum. Uh, now, whether or not it's the same aluminum that you'll see on the side of a 777 or an A380, I'm not quite sure, but it is definitely the in industry trend uh, to use the fancy the aerospace grade aluminum um, naming on a lot of devices and that is certainly the case here as well. Number nine on the list is a swappable bands. Uh, so there are swappable bands, there's a whole pile of bands. I'll throw some different stuff on the screen right now so you can see all the different bands there are. There are swanky bands, athletic bands, not so swanky bands. Some special editions come with bands. There are bands out the wazoo. But the most important thing is how easy it is to switch the bands, which is a single button. So you just simply press this little button on the back here and the whole thing pops off in one second and you're good to go. Um, super, super easy. You can do the same thing here to plop them on. So you can switch them without any tools, without a lot of complexity. Um, and it was never very complex in the past switching Fitbit bands, but this is definitely a little bit easier. It reminds me a little bit of some of the other products in the market as well that are doing this sort of one click type press. And it does feel pretty secure as long as you get the click in there. Um, so you can go in there and you can see I'm pulling apart, pulling it pretty hard and it's not snapping there. Um, but it do make sure you do get a click. If it doesn't click, it will pull apart pretty easily. Next is number 10, which is the increased processor speed. Fitbit increased the processor in the Charge 3 uh, to be faster and in turn utilize that technology or that processing overhead like all of us and the rest of the internet do to play animations. Uh, so they've added these new animations inside the watch itself uh, because everyone likes an animated GIF when you hit your steps for the day. Next on the list, number 11 is Android Quick Replies. This allows you to take your wearable device here and reply to text messages uh, directly on the device itself using kind of quick responses like yep or hello or things like that, as opposed to having to pull out your phone. Now this is only available on Android because iOS or more importantly, Apple restricts it. Uh, and it's the same restriction that Garmin and other device manufacturers run up against where they've rolled out those quick replies, like Garmin has also rolled out quick replies as well but unfortunately also only Android based. Uh, so that's not really a beef that you can take up with Fitbit, but more with Apple. Um, of course, Apple has quick replies on their Apple Watch, but then you have to have an Apple phone to work with the Apple Watch. Number 12 on the list is goal-based exercises. This allows you to set a goal for your exercise based on a given target. For example, distance or time or calories. The exact targets will change depending on the sport. So for example, in yoga, you're not gonna have a distance category. In running, you'll have distance. Uh, so there's 19 different categories you can choose from on this list. You can customize those on your iPhone app or on your Android app, on your Windows phone app because it supports all three platforms and then go ahead and send them to this device here and then you can go ahead and just use them each time you go out for a workout. Number 13 on the list is a Gorilla Glass based display. So they've gone with the Gorilla Glass 3 for the uh, Fitbit Charge 3. So it does happen to match three for three. Uh, keep in mind, this is still a touchscreen as I mentioned earlier uh, and that Gorilla Glass then is paired up with the aluminum aerospace, of course, um, backing of the unit itself. Keep in mind the aluminum part is just the little pod. The strap is not aluminum. The strap is just simply whatever material you bought for your strap. Number 14 is the addition of third-party apps. Uh, so what Fitbit has done is they've taken a bunch of their most popular apps on the Ionic and the Versa and they've kind of taken a bit of like first party control over those and they're gonna be pulling them into the Charge 3. Uh, now some of them they've announced, for example, weather uh, is in there and some of the things like that that are just things that you almost would expect on some wearables and certainly are default on a lot of other wearables. Uh, but Fitbit calls them apps and technically most other wearable companies call them apps as well. So that's one category. And they're also looking at taking third party apps. Uh, for example, maybe we'll see an Uber app or something like that. Fitbit hasn't released the names of those apps yet. They just said later this year, but I'd be pretty surprised if we're not gonna see apps like Uber and others on the list there. Now, so what depth those apps will cover? My guess is just quick confirmations interactions. Uh, so probably a lot like some of the basic things you do for goal setting of exercises, as opposed to you know a bunch of really complex interactions with Uber app, it may just be letting you know where the nearest driver is or giving them a rating or something like that. Coming to number 15 on the list is one feature this does not have, which is GPS. Uh, now in Fitbit's 
realm, these are called connected GPS devices, which is a really fancy marketing term for there is no GPS. It just happens to be with your phone if your phone is connected to your person. So if you have your phone with you, this will use a GPS on your phone to get a GPS track. So if you upload an app like Strava and others, you can go ahead and see that GPS track as well as seeing it in the actual Fitbit app itself. By itself though, if you don't have your phone with you and you go for a run or whatnot, it'll still count distance and steps and time and all that kind of stuff. It just won't show a GPS track afterwards. Now the reason for that gets number 16 in the list, which is battery life. Uh, battery life has been extended from five days up to seven days with the Charge 3. And historically, when it comes to marketing claims, Fitbit's actually been pretty good about hitting their battery life claims, more so than almost anyone else in the industry. So I would expect them to actually hit that seven days. If they had added GPS into this, it probably would have cut that down significantly. Of course, other companies are adding GPS natively into devices just as small as this and just as capable as this. It just simply means that you have less battery life. We see that with Garmin, for example, and their Vivo Sport, um, which is roughly the same size as this, actually a tiny bit smaller, and that does have GPS in it. So it's a bit of a give and take. Uh, historically, though, we've seen Fitbit push folks up to their higher end products. In this case, the Ionic has GPS in it. Uh, the Versa does not, but it's just like this and has connected GPS talking to your phone. Finally, number 17 on the list is a new Dynamic Insights and Sleep Score Beta. Now, the technical two different things, but I'm going to squish them number 17 just because we're running out of numbers here. Uh, and so the Dynamic Insights essentially starts to take a lot of the different metrics that this device is capturing, for example, heart rate and steps and sleep, and talking together about these things. So in other words, looking at your data and saying, hey, you only slept three hours, your workout was crap, maybe there's a reason for that. And it's nice for companies to finally do that. They have all this data, but no one's been really actually utilizing that data for anything. It's just been piles and piles of data that you're supposed to somehow correlate together and make some suggestions on. So that's the first piece. The second piece is the sleep scorecard. Uh, Fitbit, of course, has been tracking sleep for a long ass time, and they track a lot of sleep. And they're starting to take some of the data they have there in a big data sort of way, to use a, a term that's overused, and do something with that. And that's something you'll see both of those later on this year. So speaking of later on this year, the Fitbit Charge 3 will be shipping in October. So just a couple months away, about a month and a half away or so. Uh, now expected to ship in, of course, a number of different countries at different price points. In the US, it's at 149 for the base edition, 169 for the edition with the contactless payments in there. Uh, in other countries in Europe and North America as well, that is the base unit does not have contactless payment. In Asia Pacific, it does have contactless payments to be mentioned earlier. So just keep that in mind, depending on whether you care or don't care about that. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and whack that like button down the bottom there or the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Also, this is not a full in-depth review. That'll come later on, probably in October once they start shipping the devices. So check out the description link there for a link to the review once that drops. Have a good one.